Welcome to What's New with AWS. I'm Jeff Barr. As always, thanks for the continued feedback and all the likes. I got three great launches for you today. The first one, new VPC IP address prefixes. It actually took me a little bit of time to figure out what this is all about, but once I did, it's actually really, really useful. The net net, so to speak, because this is for networking, network interfaces now support more IP addresses when you use them within a VPC. This is good for you because it's gonna make it easier for you to run your large container-based workloads. And it's especially vital because every container needs its own unique IP address. It's also gonna help you to support other network apps that need many IP addresses, for instance. Before we launched this feature, the issue was you used to have to sometimes use a bigger EC2 instance than necessary just because it had the ability to support more network interfaces. With this new launch, it's a whole lot better. It's simpler and it's more economical for you. So here's the details. You can add this range to a new or to an existing network interface. So the IP addresses are always in a contiguous range and you use the, the standard slash addressing. For an IPv4, you can specify a slash 28 prefix. So you can have up to 16 IP addresses per interface. Now for IPv6, you can specify a slash 80 interface or prefix. So that means you could theoretically have up to 16 million IP addresses per interface. The prefixes cannot overlap within a, a VPC subnet, subnet, and we support this on all Nitro-based instances. It's available in all of the commercial and GovCloud regions right now with support in the China region coming soon. You can get to this through the console, the CLI, and through the API. And if you wanna read a lot more, you can read the what's new and you can read the documentation to learn a whole lot about this great feature. Next up. S3 access point aliases. I think I've talked about access points a little bit in the past. They're a relatively new S3 feature. I think they're actually really cool and really powerful. The idea with access points, it's gonna let you simplify and give you better access control to the data you have stored in your S3 buckets. It, it simplifies permissions because every access point has its own permissions and its own network controls. You can even have hundreds of access points per bucket if your use case is that complicated. So one bucket, multiple access points and controls gives you a lot more power. It's a lot easier for you to manage access. You can even control which VPCs can access the data. So with all that as a, as a setup, what's actually new? Well, each access point now has an alias and you can use that alias anywhere you'd reference an S3 bucket. That alias is just the URL, so you can use it for any object level operations, a put, a get, a list, and so forth. It's super easy to use because we assign an alias automatically when we create an access point for you. And any of your existing access points, we've already assigned an alias for you. Super easy to use, pretty much ready to go. So just read the what's new to learn more and put it to use for yourself today. And finally, something brand new for AWS Glue Data Brew. Fortunately, one of our only product names that has a rhyme built inside. And in fact, we've got three new awesome features. So AWS Glue Data Brew, it helps you to prepare data for analytics and machine learning. So the reason we have this is before you take that data and use it to do your, your analytics or to do your machine learning training, the data might be a little bit messy. So you often need to do a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of normalization before you can really get to the heart of what you really want to do. So with Data Brew, you can do some filtering, you can apply over 250 different transformations, you can do format conversion, you can fix up invalid values, and all, all the kind of things you need to just improve the quality of your data. So it turns out in the recent past, we've made a whole bunch of recent additions to, to AWS Glue Data Brew. Here's three I picked for you I thought you'd find really interesting. The first is it's now HIPAA eligible, so you can use this to process your healthcare data. Next thing. It supports writing to any database or data warehouse that supports JDBC. This includes Amazon Redshift, Snowflake, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle Database, and also PostgreSQL. Last cool feature, we now support customized generation of data quality statistics, so you can have a better understanding of the quality of your data. You can monitor it over time. You can even set up alerts to make sure that you are aware of any changes for the, the worst in your data quality. To find all these and the other new additions to AWS Glue Data Brew, you can search the, the what's new. Well, that's all I've got for you this week. Really hope you enjoyed all these great launches. Keep your, your comments coming. 
I always love them, read them all. You can click through, you can like, you can subscribe, leave a comment of your own. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.